Chris. You're, Thank you're you, Chris. Memorialized on the web at this point. So. Yeah. He's on his way in too, so we'll, we'll, we'll be here for him, I guess. Well, hey there, Steve. Hey there. Hey. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is good to see everybody. Looks like we've got Jennifer on the phone, but no video. Yep, I'm here. And Chris, if you can hear me, um, should we have um, staff videos on or off uh, during the meeting? I, I, I think we had talked about all of the commissioners being on and the presenter, uh, but to try to manage the number of screens that we're on, but do you have a recommendation? Um, that's typically how we've done that with other commissions. So it's really, really up to you. Um, okay. Your presentation will be taking up the majority of the screen for the bulk of the meeting. Um, but I, yeah, we generally recommend staff are only on if they're being, you know, if they're addressing the commission or are asked to speak. Okay. So as we get started, we'll keep all of the commissioners on. We'll have the staff off except for whoever's presenting and we'll proceed that way. Wonderful. Do we, we have one, two, three, oh, sorry, one, two, three. We have three, three commissioners or four. Commissioners. Four, four. okay. Four. So we still need one more before we have a quorum, is that right? Yes. Yes. Well, we can see Keith, kind of. <laughs> can anybody see me? Yep, we see you. Okay. My dog was going nuts. Oh, my God. Where are you, Shell? In my dad's backyard. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> my dog. Cody just left me a present about six inches from my foot. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Oh. Go ahead and turn the turn the smell off. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, crazy smell o vision. <laughs> so we have two. Oh, hummingbird. Or missing just one more. Craig is on his way in now. So you have a quorum in moments. Second. Thank you. All righty. It is 531, Wednesday, May 13th, uh, calling in this uh, regular order, a uh, general meeting of the Meridian Parks and Recreation <laughs> Commission. Um, if we could kindly start with roll call. Rachel, would you please call the roll? Yes, thank you. Dom Gelsomino. Present. Joe Greer is absent. Keith Bevan. Present. Jennifer Bobo. Present. Abby Hutchins is absent. Michelle Jensen. Present. John Nesmith is absent. Craig John. Steele. Oh, John is there. Sorry. I see you, John. <laughs> Craig Steele. Present. Jessica West is absent. Councilman Brad Hoagland is absent. All right. Thank you, Rachel. A quorum being present. Uh, let's move on to adoption of the agenda. Do I have a motion for the adoption of tonight's agenda? I'd like to make a motion that we adopt to tonight's agenda, Mr. Craig. A motion has been made. Is there a second? I second the motion. Seconds. Sorry. Motion has been uh, made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So ordered. Moving forward to approval of the minutes 
for our March 11th, 2020 regular meeting. Do I have a motion for the approval of the March 11th meeting minutes? I'd like to make a motion that we approve uh, the, the minutes from March's meeting. It's been moved. Is there a second? I second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So ordered. Next on our agenda, announcements. Uh, we will kick it off with uh, Steve Sidaway with our June meeting, Spring Pathways Tour. The floor is yours. All right. So uh, for our June meeting, we have historically done a, uh, a, a team building activity, like a barbecue in the park, um, which we try and do once a year. Uh, but with the, the uh, recent meetings being uh, kind of changed in our March, was it March meeting? April meeting being uh, uh, canceled, uh, which was going to be our Pathways Tour. Um, my first thought was to at least consider whether to make the June meeting our Spring Pathways Tour. Um, as I've been thinking about it more today, it's still a little unclear as to whether it will be um, appropriate to, to gather together in the van. Uh, there'll be more than 10 of us. We should be in, um, if all goes well. Um, actually, we could be in phase three where it could be appropriate. So um, if, if, if the stages, if the governor's stages continue to proceed as currently planned or scheduled, um, it, it could be appropriate for us to be able to ride together in the van and do our, our usual uh, version of the Spring Pathways Tour. Um, so I just wanted to put the idea out there that um, with details still TBD, uh, there, we had already talked before about ideas for or um, uh, locations to visit that I think we would try and re resurrect and, and bring back. But I guess I just would like to ask the commissioners that are present if you have what you think about making our June meeting the Spring Pathways Tour if it aligns with the, the, the governor's reopening stages. So back to you, Dom, if you want to go around the horn and ask, ask some of the commissioners or however you want Wonderful. to. Wonderful. Uh, are there any questions from the commission for, uh, for Director Sidway? Uh, Craig, were you gonna say something? No, um, I'll wait and let's see what the comments are. I personally think that we should just go ahead and do what we're gonna do. I, I'm gonna second that, uh, you know, if, if all goes well and we're in phase three and, and people are, you know, if our community is, you know, maintaining the, the rules and following the, the guidelines and it's safe, I'm all for, you know, full steam ahead. Mr. President. Uh, yes, was Ms. that, Bell. oh, Commissioner, <laughs> was that Commissioner Jensen? There we go. Yeah, yep. so um, I, I think I'd agree at this point. Um, you know, I'm, I will say I'm in a bit of wait and see how things go and whether or not we see a, a bounce, but better to plan it now and assume that everything is going to be good than, than take a negative stance. Yeah. So yeah, what I'm hearing is take the positive proactive stance, let's plan on it. And we can always, you know, cancel, reschedule, bump it to July if needed, but for now, because it appears that it will align, um, we could plan for a June Pathways Tour. Awesome. Steve, uh, do we have a, an idea for the, for the commission as far as which pathways we're going to be focusing on in this year's tour? Well, uh, I did not go back and look. I know that we got some feedback. Um, Kim, I see you're on here. I don't know if you remember and are able to, to weigh in. I know that there was interest in um, some of the locations in 
uh, North Meridian, like along Locust Grove. There was also some uh, potential locations mentioned in South Meridian, if I'm rem remembering correctly. Um, so we'll just need to resurrect those comments that we got before and put something together for the next agenda setting meeting, which would be coming up in a couple of weeks. Wonderful. Kim, do you have any comments you wanted to add on? Mr. President, commissioners, <laughs> hi. Hello. Um, yeah, Steve's recollection is about the same as mine. Um, I know we talked about South Meridian, that was the first thing that came up in my head. But um, yeah, if we are doing some van time and want to you know, limit it, I don't know. There's a bit down south, but we'd have to look. So um, I, we'll do that. I guess I have nothing new to say. I just second Steve. Thanks. OK, so we will review the input we got from the commission a couple of months ago and put together a proposal for the next agenda setting meeting. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Steve, if you don't have any other items on the June meeting, uh, we'll move on to Shelley's upcoming events. <laughs> Shelley, you're on mute. There, now you can you hear me? Okay. Golden. So, com hello, commissioners. Good to be with you this afternoon. Um, earlier this afternoon, I did send you an email with an attachment that was the, the new activity guide. Nice colorful cover. We chose on purpose not to print and mail and distribute in our customary way because there were a lot of uncertainties leading up to the our summer season of classes, camps, workshops, sports leagues. And we want to be able to kind of turn on a dime. So what we've done is have an online only version. It looks just like the normal activity guide, but it's just hard copy doesn't exist. So I sent it to you electronically. And um, so you can take a look if you want and any help you can give us to spread the word. People can go to meridiancity.org slash activity guide and access a nice PDF of this colorful guide. In terms of events, we did lose a few events in April and May, specifically our, our art dedication ceremonies for Renaissance Park and Champion Park their new art pieces. We had to say goodbye to Arbor Day to protect the little ones and unplug and be outside week was a no go. So those were sad, but the light is shining. There's light at the end of the tunnel. We've got some events to talk about. The Meridian Main Street Market has determined a new start date for the season and it's coming very quickly. Saturday, May 23rd, they'll open for their first day of the season. It'll run from nine to two and they'll be taking some precautions, as you can imagine, involving social distancing and trying to limit the touching of objects and crowd control and, and movement. So I don't know all those details, but there's going to be extra sanitation. All, all those things you can imagine are being taken into consideration. So Meridian Main Street Market will start Saturday the 23rd. Now, Memorial Day is going to be a little different at the Rock of Honor. Customarily, we've gathered a nice public gathering and of, of a couple hundred people for a ceremony. This year, the American Legion has decided to do more of a private event where they're gonna have a, an honor guard rifle salute, the raising and lowering of some flags and a bugler that's gonna play taps, but there's not gonna be any amplified um, sound system or a, a speeches to, to have a, an audience or a gathering. So for all intents and purposes, it's a private event. It'll probably be live streamed on Facebook and maybe recorded and we could play it back to online. So that's Memorial Day on Monday, May 25th. Uh, they'll do a few things at 11 a.m., but not intended for an audience. Um, Gene Kleiner Day, we're, we've got a few more uh, pieces of the puzzle to put together. Um, normally, it was scheduled for June 13th. That would be the traditional date, but that, that's not going to happen. So we're going to try to move it to a date in September. We're actually looking at a Friday night as a possibility. It's a function of when the park's available, the sound production team, and then the symphony itself. So we're not gonna really talk about dates in particular. We're eyeballing September 11th, but you didn't hear, hear it here from me. So anyway, nothing cast in stone on Gene Kleiner Day. Independence Day, also a little different than usual. We'll have fireworks for the public shot off over near the Speedway as usual, but no festival in Story Park. So we're gonna say goodbye to the food trucks and the games and some of the foofty do that made it fun to hang out at the park. But we'll encourage families to 
park, you know, in the neighborhood um, and enjoy the, the scene from the safety of their automobiles or a nice quiet spot where they can sit outside with their family members. Um, the last one is Sparklight Movie Night. Again, it will happen, but with a delayed start date. We're going to start on Friday, July 10th, and it'll run through August 21st. So we're going to have like seven movies instead of 12 or 13, whatever it was. So Sparklight Movie Night, Friday nights in Settlers Park beginning July 10th. And then let's not go much further than that. Some other outside groups will have some decisions soon, such as Dairy Days, um, but that's not really our story to tell. So we'll, we'll get there eventually. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Do we have any questions, comments, concerns? Shelly? Yes? Uh, just, you know, I, it is a ways away and, you know, we, we are going through these four phases per the governor's orders, but do you have an idea or a feeling between yourself and Renee, whether or not both uh, trunk or treat or whatever, you know, it'll be designated as this year and the Christmas lights parade in December will be affected at all with the ripples of this We honestly situation. don't know. Our, our brains aren't there yet. Um, <laughs> we, of course we've thought of it and wondered and worried, but we're, we're not there yet. We haven't had those discussions. We're, we've been busy getting the activity guide out and, and Camp Maridamu is gonna take place for the, the little school age children, age six to 11. So that's a biggie. So we've had some bigger fish to fry right this moment. And as soon as we get everything, get the cogs moving on this, then our, our minds will skip forward and we'll be looking towards fall and um, Christmas for sure. But right now, and you know, there's other things, maybe Kleiner Park Live, concerts on Broadway. There's more to talk about, but we're just not quite there yet. Okay. And I apologize. I did skip over one that's coming up sooner is, and I don't know, you cut out a couple of times, so I don't know if you did cover it, but Dairy Days, what is well, our... The, the, the group that, that manages Dairy Days, the, the Dairy Association, they're going to have a meeting Friday evening or late afternoon to, to make some final decisions. It's likely some elements will stay and it's likely some elements may go. They're trying to make that determination based on all the available facts and the vibe, the current vibe of, of what Dairy Days needs to look like this year. So we're hoping, we're feeling optimistic but um, it's really not for us to say that the dairy board will have to um, let us know what they decide. Um, we should know by early next week. Wonderful. Are there any further questions or comments for Shelly from the commission? I don't have Very any good. questions, but I am, oh, sorry, Mr. President. No, go ahead. I, I don't Mr. have any but uh, Sally, I just wanted to comment that I do miss all those activities. It's been a different spring. I, I was one who goes to most everything you named that was canceled. So I'm disappointed. I know. Well, we'll find some ways to have fun. Don't you worry. And some of our old favorites will be back. They might be just a little bit modified or different, but um, you can't put us down. We're going to have fun. It's the Meridian way. <laughs> well, good. I just want to make sure you all knew that, you know, I really missed them. I do too. I'm, I go to all of them myself. So I do too, but don't you worry. We'll find some ways to have fun. Okay, thank you, everyone. I'm going to go spank my dog so she stops barking. <laughs> okay, thank you. Have thank a good meeting. Thank you, Shelly. Take care. Bye. Mr. President. Bye. Mr. President. Yes, uh, Chris. Mrs. Chris, you do have, I believe, at least one additional commissioner has joined in. I believe someone is in by phone, so I wanted to make sure your record showed. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, will the commissioner with the phone number ending in 899 identify themselves? Anybody? I guess not. It, Chris, it may be someone is uh, calling in, is doing the virtual or the, the camera via their desktop and probably calling in to hear the audio. That's, that is possible as well, Mr. President. Um, Abby Hutchins was in briefly as an attendee for a moment and before I could recognize and move her, she was gone. So I, I thought maybe that was her call. Understood. All righty. Thank you, Chris. Moving forward, we don't have any old business, so we'll uh, march forward into the new business. 
Uh, our first item under new business is the Meridian Arts Commission and Meridian Historic Preservation Commission update from Audrey Belknap. Uh, she is the city's uh, Meridian, she is the city's uh, uh, NPR Arts and Culture Coordinator. And for those of you who haven't met Audrey as well, she is the uh, Teen Activities Coordinator Advisor for the Meridian Mayor's Youth Advisory Council. Uh, so Audrey, welcome to the commission and we look forward to hearing what you have to present to us. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm glad to be here. Um, so yes, like um, President Dom said, I'm new. So I just wanted to um, introduce myself. Um, not only am I new to the city, but also my position is new to the Parks and Rec Department. So that's kind of why um, I'm here is to introduce you to the projects and programs that are going on in the Meridian Arts Commission and the Historic Preservation Commission. Um, and I'm excited to do that. Just a little bit about me so you kind of know who's talking. Um, my name is Audrey. I grew up in this area. Um, this is my hometown. I graduated from Mountain View High School, but then I moved away for eight years just while I was going to school and um, exploring a little bit. And so now I just moved back here in January and started this position and I'm so happy to be here. And, and I am very passionate about the projects that are going on. My, my undergrad degree is in um, art history. So this is right up my alley. But um, first I thought we'd talk about the Meridian Arts Commission. Rachel, are you the driver? She is, Audrey, yes. Or Chris, are you the driver just for the... Rachel is driving for you. I think someone was talking, but my internet oh yes okay um it says oh could we go back one slide great thank you it keeps saying my internet is slow so i hope this goes well but the first thing i thought um we would i would talk about is uh, one of the Arts Commission's biggest projects right now. We are in the middle of creating a public art plan um, for our future public art plans, but uh, it's we're working with the consultant group via partnerships. And our goal is to create a public art plan. Uh, and this is important to the Arts Commission because in 2015, City Council passed an ordinance that um, said that stated that um, Mac would get around fifty thousand, up to fifty thousand dollars of funding for public art each year. Um, Maps, it's our Maps program. It stands for Meridian Art in Public Space, and each year we get fifty thousand dollars that we get to put forward into the community and in the form of public art, and. So we need a public art plan to strategize our, our projects and as we look into the future. Via partnerships, our consultant group is guiding us through a step-by-step -step process to help us create this plan. One thing that we just finished, um, we just closed a public art questionnaire that we distributed um, in, to, into the community as much as we could to learn from the community what the community wanted to see in public art, what they liked and what they didn't like, and those kind of questions. Um, I wanted to mention a couple of things that we learned from this questionnaire that would be relative relevant to uh, you as the Parks Commission. When we asked what the public felt was the best place for public art, 75% of the respondents said, that they felt parks are the best place for public art. So that was really interesting for us to know. That was, I mean, 75% is by far well over the majority. So we look forward to, to partnering with you in the future, I'm sure. Another one 
when we asked where citizens would bring a visitor to Meridian to show them what Meridian was all about, our top response was the parks, uh, especially Kleiner Park. So those are two um, questions that kind of popped out to me in relation to the parks and what you all are doing in the parks and how that overlaps with, with the Arts Commission as well. So the next step after we, we just closed this questionnaire, the next step is to meet with uh, small groups or one-on-one -on -one interviews to start the conversation of how um, we can integrate public art into various areas of the community. And so we look forward to doing that more this summer. We can go to the next slide. The second new project that Mac is working on this year is our mural fund. This last year, um, we were granted a budget enhancement for a public slash private mural fund. And this is significant and different from our MAPS program because our MAPS funding is conditional on being the public art located on public space. It stands for Meridian Art in Public Space. And so this um, budget enhancement that we received lets us kind of break that boundary um, and go into private space in the form of murals. So this um, picture that I included is the second most recognized public artwork according to our questionnaire, which is our, our mural here on the mill. And that is an example of public artwork that is um, on private property. We have an easement for that mural. So we're looking and hoping to do two to three more murals in the community uh, in the next year and partner with Meridian businesses to, um, to use their wall space for some public art. And so we're really excited to create some noticeable and maybe even interactive large, um, large scale artwork in the community. Right now we're in the process of writing up um, requests for qualifications from, from local businesses to apply and submit their wall space to be chosen. We could go to the next, great. So the last two projects that we just talked about, those are kind of unique projects that the Arts Commission is working on. And the next several projects that I'll talk about are annual or continuous projects that is always on the radar of the Arts Commission. Uh, the first one, one of our biggest events is our Concerts on Broadway series. It's an annual concert series that we hold each summer and um, we're really excited to be able to continue with the series this year. Thankfully we scheduled the concerts to be in late summer and so we're optimistic that we can carry on close to normal this year if all things um, keep, keep in the phases and keep getting better. We hope to be able to still hold these, maybe with some social distancing guidelines and things, but still um, be able to gather together and listen to some good music. You can see that we have three concerts um, at the end of August and through September with three different bands, Diamond Empire Band, the Kings of Swing and High Street. And all of those are local bands. So we're happy to support our local bands, um, especially in a time when it's been really difficult for many musicians in the area. Um, but we're excited about that. The other events that the Arts Commission holds each year is Art Week. It always takes place the week after Labor Day. So this year it's September 9th through the 12th. And the purpose of Art Week is to facilitate uh, interaction within the community with art, whether that's creating art or just looking at art it's to infuse art and interaction with art in the, in the community. And so we always have a series of activities, whether that's musical performances or dance performances or um, classes on artwork, anything like that, where we can help the community experience art. Our two most popular activities during Art Week is the Art Drop, where creators of all kinds, whether that's with jewelry or drawing or photography or ceramics, 
you know, creators of all kinds, they can um, put their pieces in a baggie and hide it somewhere downtown and leave it for another passersby to, to find it and pick it up and keep it. People have really enjoyed that. So we're, we're gonna continue with that. People have also enjoyed uh, the student um, chalk competition where student groups, clubs, um, teenagers come and uh, chalk a little square of artwork and we have a competition and it's really neat to walk along the street and see all the different artwork on the, on the sidewalk. So we're happy that we get to continue with that this year as well. So according to the public art questionnaire that we just closed, our traffic box wraps are the, the favorite public artwork in our area. Um, a majority of people said their favorite public artwork is our traffic boxes. Uh, so that was really interesting and exciting for us to learn. Each year, the Arts Commission wraps around nine to 11 new traffic box wraps, and half of those are funded by the MAPS program and the other half are funded by MDC. We partner with them so that um, they wrap the other half. And um, the second half of the wraps are artwork from the West Ada School District Art Show. The winners um, get their artwork wrapped on a traffic box. So that is also a fun thing that we have going on and we're, we're just about to choose and select the traffic boxes to be wrapped this summer. And so uh, you might be seeing some new wraps up in the next couple of months. The last thing that the Arts Commission manages is the initial point gallery on the third floor of City Hall. We have monthly exhibits with local or regional artists, um, a blend of 2D artists and 3D artists and it's really fun to see the different groupings of artists come through, the different styles, the different mediums. Um, there always seems to be something new. So um, I hope when City Hall opens up again, we can meet in person. You can swing by the gallery before um, the commission meetings and see what we've got going up there. Cause there's, you know, monthly exhibits is a pretty quick revolving door. So there always is something interesting to see up there. So that's all of the Arts Commission projects. Um, the second commission that I get to be a part of is the Historic Preservation Commission. And they are also working on um, a lot of interesting projects focused on preserving Meridian's history. One of our really neat things that we've got going on, we've, we've partnered with Whole Film. Brandon Hull is a local, um, a, a local to Meridian, he grew up uh, in Meridian, graduated from Meridian High School, but has gone on to um, build his company of virtual tours, and he travels all over the states to record these virtual tours. So we feel pretty lucky that he has a particular attachment to, to Meridian history. But we just did um, virtual tours of Main Street, Pine Street School, and the old Black Hat Mint, Mint Farm. Um, could we, I included the link to the virtual tours just so we can, I could kind of show, show you what the virtual tours are like for a quick minute. I don't know if it's this is Chris. I'm going, going to, take to open up and share that. that. Sorry, I couldn't hear that. I was addressing Mr. President. I'm going to take over from Rachel just for a moment to share my screen um, in case she has some difficulty there. Thank okay. You. Okay, so this is the um, the Main Street virtual tour, and it's just a 3D tour where you can you can you know, go around and this will zoom us to the Pine Street School so you can see this and 
Um, you can go inside the Pine Street School, but each of those points right there, it will bring up either a photo image or um, inside the Pine Street School, Brandon has included some, some points where you can click on, yeah. Thanks, Chris. There's one, um, several points in the back there. If you just click on one, yes, that's a great one. He highlighted the, the teacher certificate for Betty Kostler, who was um, the teacher in, in the Pine Street School, and it has interesting facts, and so it highlights these artifacts that are within the historical sites. Um, we have been really pleased with how these virtual tours have turned out. They are so cool, um, and they're, they're connected to the Historic Preservation um, Commission's web page. So if you want to look more at it, you can uh, look at it there. There's even historical photos. If you swing around to look at um, to look at City Hall, there's a pinpoint there that will bring up a picture of the old creamery. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you can kind of see what was there before City Hall. Anyways, it is really cool. Thank you, Chris, for for driving there. But the Historic Preservation Commission plans on continuing with, with these virtual tours. I think we may have lost Audrey. The Meridian Speedway. So we're... Oh, can you? I'm, Audrey, are you still there? I'm still here. I can hear okay. you and see you. I just, I don't keep saying my internet is slow. So, oh, is it not doing very well? Oh. Hey, great. Okay, so. Turn your volume down that one. Okay, great. great. I'm also going to turn off this camera so I don't have it going. Uh, oops. Okay. Hopefully this will. Okay. Shall I just keep going on? Okay. I'll just keep going on here. Um, just there's just a little bit left, but so those are historical. Our historical. Um, virtual tours and we're really excited about that. I apologize, I'm not able to transition to the next slide. Um. Well, well, while we wait for the slides to change, I'll just tell you about the next project. Um, Similar to the virtual tours, we're working on listing the Meridian Speedway on the National Registry of Historic Places. And um, we are, thankfully and gratefully, we accepted a grant from the, histor the State Historical Preservation Office. And um, we got a $2,000 grant to help us with the reconnaissance survey to, to list the Speedway on the National Registry. So we're going to um, start the process for that, and that will carry us through through the year. And we are partnering with another local business called Tag Historical Research Research to to assist us in that process. And we can go to the last slide, the last project. Great. Last thing that the Historic Preservation Commission is working on is Preservation Month, which is each May. Um, normally, the Historic Preservation Month hosts a walking tour downtown. The commissioners all get together and any member of the public comes to downtown and is able to, um, 
is able to walk with the commissioner through the downtown walking tour to see the historical sites around downtown. But since um, we are still phasing into um, being in gatherings again, we decided to go virtual. So we are gonna be posting um, videos of the commissioners highlighting each of the historical sites around downtown. And so that anyone on social media can join us to celebrate Preservation Month and the history that we have here in Meridian. So we are excited about that. And those are all of the projects um, that the Arts Commission and the Historic Preservation Commission is really focused on right now. Like I've said before, I'm happy to be a part of them, but if there are any questions, I'd love to answer them. Do we have any, uh, thank you, Audrey, uh, for your presentation. Do we have any questions for Audrey from any of the commissioners? Hearing none, Audrey, just want to, uh, you know, say I'm, I'm personally excited for these projects. I, you know, moving here from a bigger state uh, so many years ago, it's nice seeing the cultural side and the uh, expressive artistic side of, of our cities and of our state starting to grow a little bit more. It, it definitely gives us a unique identity and, and we'll continue to, uh, to cement that as we go forward. Uh, just out of curiosity, what, what was the sample size for the uh, poll that you guys conducted? We had about between 200 and 250 responses. Nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you so much. If there are no further questions from Audrey, um, we can move forward with our next item. Audrey, thank you so much again. Our next item is uh, Parks and Rec Department update with uh, Director Steve Sidaway. Steve, the floor is yours once again. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, pleasure to be here. I'm glad we're able to, to meet and uh, use this technology to uh, keep things moving forward. So I really appreciate that. I also want to just start off with, this, with a shout out to Audrey. She, like she mentioned, is new to the department. The position is new to our department as well. Um, the commissioners that are, are, will be familiar with uh, Hillary Blackstone um, when she was in the clerk's office. So this is kind of the role that Hillary used to do, but it has switched departments. And Audrey has just done a phenomenal job at uh, coming in and just grabbing the bull by the horns and uh, jumping with both feet and figuring it out. So really, really impressed and love the work that she's done and, and helping these two other commissions uh, continue to move forward. So a huge thank you to her. Um, today, I wanted to share with you this uh, annual Parks and Rec Department update. It's actually a preview of uh, a presentation I will be giving to the city council next week at the, com at the city council meeting. So I'd uh, welcome your, your feedback and any comments uh, going into to that. But um, uh, Rachel, next slide. I hit the button. It's taking a minute or so, I guess. <laughs> Let's see. Um, let me try it again. <laughs> to say that uh, we do have uh, some new council members that uh, are new to the city council. So I'm planning to go over uh, our mission. Um, I won't read it to you, but in, if I were to boil it down to just the words in yellow, we're here. Uh, our, our, our mission is to enhance our community's quality of life. And we do so in many different ways, in, including parks and pathways and uh, classes and camps and, and uh, uh, you know, events and sports and a variety of things. But we like this idea of creating lasting memories and, and uh, enhancing the community's quality of life. Keep going. Next slide. Um, so uh, again, our, just to touch on our vision, 
I love the focus on the family. These family focused opportunities are really key. And one thing that we find is a, a family friendly community is a friendly community to, to, to people of all ages. And uh, uh, we hear all the time from seniors that they move here because of the opportunity it brings to their kids and grandkids. And uh, uh, we, we, we love the multi general multi-generational aspect of our family focused vision so next so our, our focus areas we have three words that have come to mean, to mean a lot to us quality community and fun you see them a lot you know everything from quality uh parks and, and construction you know events that build community and at the end of the day you know what fun is what we're all about and trying to create build those opportunities um Next slide. Um, so we've been dubbed the Department of Fun before. We uh, uh, enjoy that moniker and, and uh, do our best to live up to it. But uh, you can see a, a nice little snapshot of our staff from, from last fall. We're uh, a lean, mean, but growing machine uh, that uh, continues to grow and adapt to the needs and demands of the community as the community continues to grow. In fact, the next slide will show you a just a quick overview of our uh, org chart. So this is uh, who we are today, um, 38 positions total in both parks and recreation combined, um, including uh, things like the home court, and uh, so that's that's all of us today. Next slide. Next slide is all of you. So uh, this is our Parks and Recreation Commission. We really appreciate the work of our uh, citizen commissioners who help to lead and and guide us. Um, we appreciate the opportunity to bring you uh, projects that are being worked on and gather your valuable feedback. Um, and uh, so thank you. Next slide. Um, the next slide jumps into our facilities. So for the, some that uh, don't know, I think most of you do know, um, our main offices are here at City Hall. But we also have our park maintenance shop over on Lenark. Next slide. And then we also have our existing community center here in downtown on Idaho and the Meridian Home Court, uh, which is off uh, Taylor Avenue, which is uh, off Franklin Road. Uh, next, uh, next slide, I want to talk about um, the, our focus on parks, plazas, open spaces, and, and pathways. This is kind of the, the park side of parks and recreation, and then we'll move into the recreation side after that. But, this is a, an overview of the, the park system map. One thing that we really take pride in is the way that we have not just focused on one part of town, but the existing park amenities that we have are spread out north, south, east, west, and central. Um, you can see the breakdown between the different types of parks on the right. Um, the three regional parks are the most known. Those are Settlers Park, Kleiner Park, and now Discovery Park in the south. Um, if you look at the regional community and neighborhood parks, I think that's 18 of them. Um, you know, those are the parks that most people think of as traditional parks. Um, uh, they, you know, they have a, a park, a restroom, a playground. Um, the special use parks are things like Generations Plaza downtown, and the sports parks are, are things like the, you know, the Jable Fields. Um, if you count up all of those locations that we own or manage, there are 23. But when people ask, how many parks do you have? My response is always, depends on how you wanna count them. Um, we have 23, um, but in those traditional park sense of what most people think of as true parks, we have 18. So, next slide. Um, this is the list of, of those parks. And uh, we now have 334 total acres of developed parkland. Uh, we own 97 acres of undeveloped parkland. Uh, and you can see that most of that is either at Discovery Park or 
the future West Meridian uh, Regional Park, also known as the Borat property. And then we uh, have about 40 miles in, of total pathway in Meridian. It's still a connecting uh, system. A lot of it is, is owned and maintained by HOAs. Um, the, seg the segment of that that is owned and maintained by Meridian Parks and Recreation is about 14 miles of it. Next slide. Looks at that pathway system in a little more detail. Um, the commission has helped us prioritize the pathway network with the, the five mile creek pathway and the 10 mile creek pathway being the top priorities. And then we have a real uh, interest in the regional rail with trail effort also, which is more of a long-term effort. But uh, connectivity is definitely a priority in Meridian. Um, there's also the, what was called the Meridian Loop that kind of goes around the city and uh, tries to uh, connect them all, which is also a work in progress, but definitely coming together. Next slide. Um, this shows the, the pathway growth. You can see we're between 80,000 and 90,000 uh, lineal feet today. Uh, and these are the pathways specifically maintained by the city. Next slide. Urban forestry is another big focus of ours. Um, big shout out to Elroy Huff, who's been our longtime arborist. Um, and Matt, who took his place, has been a wonderful addition to our staff. Um, but we will always celebrate uh, our, our time with Elroy. Um, he was great and honored member of our staff. So we have our park system trees that we maintain, our downtown tree boxes that we maintain, our annual Arbor Day celebration, which we've now been in Tree City USA for 18 years. And then uh, finding and bringing the Christmas tree for the lighting ceremony is always also an, an annual event. Uh, we maintain over 5,500 trees for the city of Meridian, um, which is an am amazing and growing number. If you'll go to the next slide, I think it shows some perspective for that. Uh, if you go back to 2009, that number was 1,690. And uh, today you can see it's uh, 5,597, almost 5,600 trees. Uh, the, the, the graphic on the right are the downtown tree boxes. And uh, there were 96 originals, 84 of them have been replaced, two were removed. Um, eight are still okay as they are and don't need to be uh, removed today. And then two will be done by future development. Over that time, 49 new tree boxes for projects like you know, City Hall and Compass Building and others have been added over time. So the number downtown is, is grown to 145 tree boxes that we maintain. Uh, but the good news is, is that we have kind of reached the end of the initial phase of the uh, replacements that are urgent, as you can you, there are eight still out there that we would expect to do at some point, but don't need to be done urgently. So uh, we're in a good place as far as the downtown tree boxes are concerned. Next slide. So next we're going to move into the recreation side and uh, the, our classes, camps, and excursions. So our activity guides are published in, we have a combined winter spring one. The summer one, which Shelly just told you about, and uh, it is online this summer. And then we have uh, uh, our fall one. So three, three every year. Next slide. Um, you can see the, uh, the registrations uh, through May 5th of this year. And uh, so you can see that we continue to, to grow. We haven't ever figured out why 2015 was Kind of that high anomaly year but you can see the general trend otherwise upward and we'll just have to wait until next year to see how this year compares uh, but we do expect it to be uh, down somewhat our adult sports leagues and tournaments are another focus we have basketball leagues softball leagues um, and those are adult sports uh, we do of course have youth sports in the community, but the, the city provides the space for partner organizations for those, as opposed to needing to run those ourselves. We also have the flag football and volleyball leagues and look forward to seeing those uh, 
restart. Um, our anticipated date is, is June 1 for those to restart for us this year. Next slide. Again, you can see the upward trends with uh, the, the numbers um, through, through last year. And then this year is still, over, still in progress. Um, the, the spring leagues were postponed and they were, they're actually getting ready to, to kick off soon. I'll also, I have a slide that I'll hold for later, but just as a little preview, we're excited to roll out some new uh, sports leagues this summer that kind of accommodate more of the social distancing guidelines as well. So uh, next slide. So special events, I won't spend a lot of time on this because Shelly's already done a great job giving you an update, but uh, these are the special events that we focus on uh, to try and build that sense of community. And uh, you know, while they might have adjustments this year, we do intend to move forward and uh, do them as, as they make sense uh, for the community. So next slide. Um, concerts on Broadway. So this is the, uh, the, the Art and Arts Commission and Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, Audrey just gave you a great update on, on all of these. These are images from some of those activities that are part of those commissions, but now also part of our department. And as you can tell, there's a great, you know, marriage or reason why those fit well with us and our mission for parks and recreation. So we're excited to see the collaboration that's gonna be able to happen by having that um, in our department. Next slide. Next is the volunteers. So um, our volunteer program uh, also anticipated to, to restart with the uh, phase three in uh, beginning of June. Our park ambassador program being key uh, to that. We also have a lot of volunteers daily at our city hall information desk. Uh, they do tours for elementary uh, school kids in the spring. Um, and then of course, just lots and lots of groups from the community that come out and, and help us out as well as our scouts from uh, a lot of boy scouts, but as uh, girl scouts as well, so had a lot of Eagle Scout projects over the years that have done some great things for us. Next slide shows you some of the volunteer hours that actually save the city money and how it's grown over time. Um, so uh, bringing the, the volunteer coordinator position into our department in 2016 um, really helped to, to boost our numbers and uh, uh, those volunteer programs lead to some very real cost savings to the city. You can see, you know, 150,000 or so last year and, uh, you know, upwards of $200,000 in, in past years. So we really love and appreciate our volunteers. Um, next slide um, starts to get into some of our accomplishments. We want to talk about what, what we've been up to over the past year. The, the big one of course, is the opening of Discovery Park. Um, our grand opening was July 26th of last year. Um, we also did a major remodel at the Meridian Home Court in what was we call Bay 5, and we held an open house celebrating that on February 14th on uh, Valentine's Day earlier this year. Um, the Renaissance and Champion Park art installations are in. You can see the photos there. Um, we look forward to holding ribbon cutting ceremonies for them this summer um, uh, when it makes sense. Uh, and then you've already met Audrey, but she's been a, a great addition and fill, filled the new arts and culture coordinator position. Next. Um, additional accomplishments include uh, last fall celebrating the dedication of, in Fuller Park of the Charlie Roundtree ball field. Um, we also have a partnership with the library to build a um, memory lane story walk in Kleiner Park that is now completed and ready for a uh, ribbon cutting this summer as well. Um, Fuller Park received its uh, ADA repairs on schedule 
and uh, the Heroes Park parking expansion design has uh, happened and we're going into construction documents now and getting ready um, if budgets are approved this summer uh, to bid next winter and be under construction next year. Um, Skyler, uh, pictured on the lower right, is our new recreation coordinator for sports. And uh, he's also been, been a great addition and comes with some, some great ideas that are on an upcoming slide. Next slide. So this is probably the big news. Um, you know, this time of the closures and the, the co whole COVID-19 response has been uh, particularly difficult. And we look forward like everyone else to seeing things reopen. Um, with stage one, we already have reopened youth sports practices. Um, there are not games or tournaments currently happening with that, but we also opened our park restrooms and church uses were approved in stage one. So we actually have several church uses uh, reserving uh, space in our parks as well. Stage two is scheduled if all goes according to plan for this weekend. And on Saturday, we plan to reopen our pickleball and tennis courts, reopen our playgrounds, reopen our outdoor gyms, and uh, the Main Street Market season um, was, already, was also approved to open in stage two. And like Shelly mentioned, their planned opening um, is in another week uh, out on May 23rd, but coming soon. So we look forward to all of those. Um, in stage three, when uh, groups of up to 50 people uh, become allowed, um, tentatively scheduled for May 30th, uh, we would in intend to open up shelter field and court reservations up to that size, restart our adult softball and volleyball leagues. Uh, we do believe that that's when the, the games will start to be allowed again. Um, we'll reopen Meridian Home Court with some social distancing practices. We'll get the community center classes open and uh, uh, restart our park ambassador and volunteer programs, open our splash pads, and open summer camp. Now, even though summer camp and those classes uh, don't start until stage three, like was already expressed, the registration for those are open now. And the response has been phenomenal. Um, the summer camp registrations opened on Monday, just two days ago. Uh, the North Meridian camp at Discovery is nearly full already. The South Meridian camp at Siena is about half full. And uh, the community center activity guide uh, classes are now out and, and open for registrations as well. Stage four is when groups larger than 50 become uh, open, reopened. So the, the larger shelter and field reservations as long as, as, as well as the larger events and tournaments with social distancing practices can re be restart as well. So that is our, our reopening plan. I know it was shared with the commission uh, previously, but wanted to just take a moment and go over it in a little more detail. So next slide. Um, the commission has talked about this already, so I don't need to hit this too hard, but the, uh, the council as a group needs uh, the general update that the Commission is already familiar with, and that is um, the postponement, if you will, of the next phase uh, of Discovery Park. Although um, we have done quite a bit of work uh, uh, that won't be lost on the, the planning and, and concept planning for those uh, future phases, we were able to successfully do uh, several activities of youth outreach, both to the Mayor's Youth Advisory Council and to uh, students at Victory Middle School to get their feedback on uh, teen activities in the parks. Um, the, the phase two is uh, currently being postponed due to the roads and intersections in the area being underimproved, not having the sewer to the site yet, the lack of pedestrian activity, and then work where is ongoing with Williams Pipeline. Um, 
construction environment is uh, currently not conducive to good pricing. And the, the, there's some uncertainties with budget, although we do have uh, uh, impact fees available. Right now, we're, you know, we're not pushing out too far, but, and then even this is tentative, but uh, it's currently planned for FY22, pending future improvements in the area that would allow us to move forward with the next phase of Discovery Park. Next slide. Um, a couple others that I think are, are worth noting. One is the uh, new community center, which is a partnership with uh, the Galena team, uh, the planning department and MDC. Um, they are, the planning department is focused on the civic block as a whole and the new urban renewal area. Um, for our department has been actively doing interviews and remote tours with other uh, community centers in the region, we've recently done several in Utah that have been willing to uh, meet with us via Zoom and, and help us answer questions. Uh, there's a lot of work ongoing, trying to build the site plan into more of a multi-use concept rather than just being a, uh, a community center. Can there also be some commercial activity or on the site or uh, housing is another popular uh, concept. So those are still being worked out with planning and Galena. Um, of course, staffing is going to be a key element in the type of community center that we can run. And we'll be having future conversations about what that staffing model might look like. I put the fees on here because I, it's not a current project, but um, if our fees seem to have had quite a bit of interest by the council lately and talking about um, cost recovery models. And so what I wanted to put out there and get some feedback from the council on is, you know, would, would they like us to do, and I believe they would like us to do a review of our fees. It would involve a partnership with the finance department because uh, they can help us um, dig in and uh, build the, uh, the PBB or priority based budgeting cost recovery model um, that would actually have graphs based on the adopted cost recovery philosophy for our different things. And I think there's interest in that. Uh, the, the finance department adopted new finance policies recently that include a, a pyramid of, of cost recovery that we need to work in all of our programs into. And I think an opportunity to do a lot of this is with a a five-year master plan update that we'll be talking about as a potential project with our um, uh, with our FY21 budget. So, uh, just something that that may come with that if it's approved. Next slide. Um, on the horizon, things that are coming. Um, Five Mile Creek Pathway. We've got several projects underway. East James Court is a big one, and uh, that sidewalk widening project is actually under construction right now. Um, so that's exciting, and we're we're glad to hear that that is uh, uh, construction projects moving forward um, in in conjunction with at the same time as the Meridian Road, the larger ACHD Meridian Road project um, out in front of it that it will connect to. Uh, segment D is the, the piece near the uh, wastewater treatment plant. We've talked about that. It's definitely on our uh, horizon as a, as a future project. And then right at the trailhead near Reed Husky Park will be our first trailhead on the, park, on the pathway system. And then the Fairview Ave Avenue connection is that, that kind of awkward piece where what we call segment H2 comes out and meets Fairview. You kind of got to go along the uh, the road right there. Uh, it looks like that's going to be approved as a CDBG project and able to be built a, a little sooner than it otherwise would have been. So looking forward to that. Next slide. Um, so I mentioned that uh, Skylar came to us with some uh, fun new ideas. So. We've actually already put out, and you may have seen advertisements for a new cornhole and spike ball leagues that will be uh, running this summer. 
we're ex the, the Cornhole League especially has kind of created a buzz and we're interested to see how many people will uh, actually register and, and join in with that. But uh, there's been a, a lot of excitement, it seems, uh, uh, surrounding that starting up this summer. Um, along Pine Avenue, uh, we got the pedestrian rest stop, which is also a, a pathway related project. You can see the concept plan on the upper right. Um, they, you know, some concrete areas, benches, bike repair station, landscaping, things like that along the pathway route. And then the uh, Finch Lateral South Slough Pathway is the project near the intersection of Locust Grove and Eustick that we've been working on for a while. And it is um, ready to move forward uh, if approved this next year into construction. So we look forward to that on the horizon. Next slide. So we're getting to the end. Um, these are ways that you can follow us by, on our website, Facebook. We have a very active uh, uh, Facebook following. Uh, also on Twitter, we like to use the hashtags MyMeridian and Meridian Parks. And uh, with that, last slide is a thank you. And I will stand for any questions. Thank you, Steve. Do we have any questions from the commission? Hearing none, Steve, since you have the floor as well for the next item, uh, for the budget requests update, do you want to just transition into that? Actually, Absolutely. Dom, yeah, this yes. is Michelle. Sorry. Yes. I Hi, do Michelle. have a quick comment for Steve. Yes, um, go ahead. You asked for feedback on your slide deck. And one thing that I think um, kind of stuck with me was in Audrey's prior conversation piece. She mentioned in the survey they did that Meridian Parks was really the key piece that people called out as what draws them to Meridian. Um, I don't know if you could potentially use some of that data to just show how important the parks are to Meridian as a community uh, center, just so the commission understands that this isn't just, you know, a department over here that, you know, is taking care of the parks, but really something that is a central focus of what draws families and, and businesses to come here. Thank you, and I appreciate that. Um, Audrey's actually presenting right before me at the council meeting as well. So I, I expect that they will hear that from her, but if not, and maybe even if so, I may just uh, build off it and, and uh, underscore that. So thank you. You can always do that, as you just heard. <laughs> yeah. Any, any other questions or comments before we move to the next presentation? Okay. The floor uh, is yours. You wanna bring it up? Uh, this one's not as long as the last one. We have uh, a, a smaller number of budget requests this year compared to uh, pre previous years. Um, uh, trying to be and wanting to be, uh, you know, fiscally responsible. And uh, of course, we always do try to be that. But um, I just wanted to go over with you specifically what our, um, they used to be called enhancements. So those of you that have been with us a while, these are what are enhancements. We're kind of changing our terminology and simply calling them budget requests. Uh, same thing either way. But these, so these are our, our budget requests. Um, the first, go ahead. The first one is uh, pathway related, and as I mentioned in the presentation I just made, the uh, that uh, the Finch Lateral or South Slough construction is one that we've been working on. Um, Kim and Mike have been diligently meeting with H members of the HOAs and uh, getting permissions, coordinating with the irrigation districts. Um, this is now a project that would connect a, a series of existing pathways uh, through uh, an existing uh, older subdivision that you know, where a pathway would not get built unless we were able to go in and do it ourselves, but it would kind of com uh, complete that connection out to Locust Grove Road from those pieces that are being built by more recent and current uh, 
uh, development. So uh, that is one of the requests. And then tied to it um, are, in the next slide please, are other pathway connections. And you, you had, this was actually our last meeting. If you remember the presentation by Kim, she did a great job and, and you guys weighed in. And these were the 12 possible uh, projects where, you know, we think we can make a, a, a bigger difference if we can move these forward and start to get these things connected in a meaningful way. So I'm not gonna go through them individually um, because they are all ones that you've already seen, but based on the feedback that the commission gave us um, back in March, we're proposing to move all of those potential projects through into to concept design. Now, just to be clear, the budget that we're asking for won't build all of these but it would allow us to fund the concept designs, uh, the survey work and legal descriptions. And then we could do that preliminary work and get um, cost, better cost estimates to be able to uh, request funding in a, an additional year for construction. Um, so, but this would move forward a significant number of projects into concept design and uh, uh, the gathering of easements to make them real. Next slide. The second one, and I believe there are five total of these if I remember right. Um, so uh, Heroes Park Parking Expansion. This one is a partnership with PAL. The, the partnership agreement has already been signed. Uh, they would split the costs with us 50-50. Um, what it would do is um, expand the, the parking area out there. Right now, there's a lot of parking that happens along 10 Mile. With the widening of 10 Mile, those on-street parking opportunities will be going away and curb and gutter will be going in. So our options are either expand the parking in the park or reduce the number of games that can be played um, by community youth and we'd rather, you know, try and maximize the use of the park and try and accommodate all the games we can um, and see the parking lot expanded there. So that we have a great partnership with them. Um, they recently finished paying off the previous um, uh, partnership that we had with them to uh, develop the, the previous phase of the park. And now that they're done with that, they're willing to enter into a new agreement with us and and split the cost of this with us. So that's great. Next, next slide. Um, so the planning department recently put out a call for to the city council about uh, three different roundabouts that ACHD is planning in South Meridian. One at Locust Grove and Victory, one at Eagle and Amity, one at Eagle and Zaldia. And the question was, you know, what does the city want to see in the middle of these roundabouts? Do you want to have uh, landscaping? Do you just want them to be rock? Do you want art? Do you not? Um, and so this is just, uh, this isn't money to build anything, but this is just a little bit of seed money to do some concept planning work, develop some concepts for what the middle of those roundabouts could be. Um, are they all the same? Are they different? And just be able to do some basic funding for some uh, initial concept plans. Next slide. Um, and then the master plan. Now, I for one can hardly wrap my mind around the idea that it's been five years this year since the master plan was adopted. It just, it just seems like we just finished it. And yet it has been five years. Five years ago, we were working on it. It was adopted December of 2015. So come December of 2020, it'll be five years since it was adopted. Um, Population at that time was somewhere in the neighborhood of 90,000. I don't know the current population for sure, but let's say it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 120. So we've got 30,000 new residents that have moved in just over that time. I, I propose that it's a good time to uh, just check in with the community with a scientifically valid survey, um, test some of our priorities, um, see what kind of feedback we get, um, see if there are any changes um, it would also give us the opportunity to 
look at our fee structures that I mentioned in the last presentation. Um, honestly, if this doesn't get funded, I don't feel like anything falls apart. You know, we have a good plan. We have a, we have direction. Uh, we kind of know what we plan to do, but at the same time, it does seem like it's a good time given the growth of our community to check back in, make sure we're on the right track. So that's the idea there. Next slide. Um, we also have um, our, some capital equipment purchases. There is a, uh, a walk behind cedar and a deep tying aerator. And that aerator would attach to, you know, a tractor that we already own. And uh, we're, we need these pieces of equipment for our growing park system, places like the Kleiner Park event area to get parked on regularly for uh, car shows, things like that. There's a lot of compaction and getting a, a true deep tiny aerator like this will help us uh, maintain those areas for the long term into the future. Next slide. Um, well, I don't need to go through these all individually, but we do have a series of life cycle replacements, and including probably of most interest to the commission would be the, the soft tile around the little city of rocks. If you've been out to Settlers Park recently, you'll notice that there's a lot of gaps and cracks and things. So we'd like to get that uh, replaced, Some a couple of vehicle replacements and then some old equipment uh, replacements as well. Next slide. Uh, there's an annual re computer replacements that uh, uh, the, the IT department tracks. So this is just based on our the regular replacement schedule. Next slide. And that is it. So though that's an overview of our uh, kind of abbreviated uh, budget request, but it shows you what we think the high priority items are for FY21 budget and what we'd like to see. Uh, carry through into next year. So with that, I'll stand for any questions. Thank you so much, Steve. Do we have any questions from the commission? Mr. President. Uh, Commissioner Steele. Uh, Steve, I had a, as far as budget goes, do we have any additional funds in there for um, additional construction of some of the pathways? Um, so the the construction funds that we would be requesting would be specifically for that South Slough pathway. And then we would also be asking for um, the, the concept planning and, and uh, easement gathering work for those 12. Um, there, there is, we have current budget that we're using to work on the existing projects like uh, James Court and then we have funding coming through CDBG for pathway project construction, like the Fairview connection. I'm not sure if that answers your question, but that's where we're Wait at. How does this year's budget compare to previous years? Because I've talked a lot with some of our city council members and we need to get, um, I guess, more funding for pathways that we need to construct versus waiting for those that, you know, of course, the growth is going to pay for. Yeah. So the request for this year is larger than past years. Um, there's not been a, a single year. I mean, we, we have a placeholder of, you know, 100 to 150,000. Uh, but some years we've gotten more than that, some years less. Um, this year we would be requesting more. Okay. Can I jump in on that, Mr. President? Yes, Kim, please do. Yeah, and just kind of as a reminder, I think there is there have been a lot of questions about why not construction. Um, and we did, I think since I've been here, we've learned a bit of a lesson in terms of let's get those permissions, let's do the concept planning, let's do kind of a one-two process. So uh, we figure out if it's a real project, we're able to accurately estimate construction, and then the next year we budget for construction. So it's a little bit slower, but it's not really a little bit slower because we know it's a project by the time we fund the construction. So um, that's part of, yeah, why, why we're doing it in, in steps like that. Um, I think it ultimately is as effective and time expedient. It just, it just feels a little bit um, like a separation. 
I think we've tried to budget in past years for, you know, assuming that we could try and get planning, the easements and the construction done. What we found is it's um, just more reasonable and realistic for us to uh, go after the the easements first, do the concept planning, and then come back the, se the second year for the construction as a one-two. But that doesn't mean we're not constructing. We still, there, there's kind of an ongoing cycle, you know, design these and construct these this year. And then the next year you're building these and designing some new ones. So the idea is to have a revolving door of projects that are being planned and constructed. Other questions? If there are no further questions, we will move forward uh, with our agenda. Thank you so much, Steve, for those updates. Thank you, Mr. President. We don't have any workshops, so <laughs> Steve, the platform is yours once again for staff reports. You know, I, I think you've heard from me. I, I have rolled in all of my updates into uh, the presentation I just gave, so I, I think I'll just let that stand and we can move on to Mike. Wonderful. Mike, uh, take it away. Okay. Good evening, uh, commissioners. Nice to uh, talk to you. I wish we could meet in person, but this is better, way better than not having a meeting for sure. Um, a lot of the stuff that I've been working on has kind of been touched on, like the Heroes Park parking lot. Um, I've been doing quite a bit of work on budget, uh, the art pieces, getting those closed out. Um, you know, one of the cool things with the art piece at Renaissance Park is the there's a light that shines through all the glass and it lights up a um, medallion on the ground at the spring equinox. And the way that the artist um, constructed it and fabricated all the pieces and installed it, that the light, he actually made the final positioning of the medallion on the equinox itself and it worked perfectly so it was really cool i mean he, he took a picture he was out there setting it and just moving it by inches to get it perfectly set so that was pretty exciting to see that come together the way it did a um, couple other things um, we we replaced the um, the ball field lights, the stadium lighting at Discovery Park, we retrofitted those lights with LED lights. It was actually less expensive to buy the bright glare HID lights and, retro, and then go in and retrofit than it was to do the LEDs in the beginning because we were able to not only sell the, the HID lights that went in, but we got um, the Idaho Power Energy Conservation Rebate. So the, that project's done. Um, the grant for Fairview um, is, is really a big deal and it allows all those other 12 projects to move forward. Um, it's a $380,000 grant that's coming our way. So that's, that's kind of a big deal too. Um, we did some heavy maintenance on the U10 slash pickleball courts at Settlers Park. Um, and what's kind of noteworthy about that is it was time to resurface the courts. So what we did is because it, as it turned out, the courts are primarily used for pickleball. So we just, when we did the resurfacing, we did away with all the conflicting lines. And now those small courts at Settlers are dedicated pickleball courts. So there's no more conflicting lines and they've got a brand new surface to play on. So it's um, good to go there. We, We'll get them opened up hopefully this weekend and um, that'll be good. Um, we're also working on working with the mayor's senior advisory board um, and their project this year, last year. Um, if you remember, they did the fishing dock at Kleiner Park. They've identified some fitness equipment um, as their project this year. So we're working on putting together a, uh, some fitness equipment to go in to Kleiner Park near the senior center, but really more closely related to the fishing dock area. Uh, we're trying to get a donation of the concrete so we can purchase some additional equipment, but if not, they have the project 
fully funded and they'll be taking that to council in the form of an update next Tuesday. And then I guess finally, our new city arborist that Steve kind of touched on, Matt Perkins, been showing him the ropes for the last couple of months. Um, I don't need to show him the ropes in regards to trees. I just need to, to show him processes and places and parks and other areas that we take care of. And he'll be coming in to talk to the commission to give him an update. We were just giving him a few months to get some time under his belt and get more familiar with kind of the lay of the land and the way we do things. And um, he's, he's really a um, fascinating guy to talk to. His knowledge of trees is just over the top. I mean, it's fun to, it's almost fun to hang out with him because you can talk, you can ask questions about um, you know, what's going on with this tree or that tree or whatever. And he's just like a, a walking encyclopedia of horticultural knowledge when it comes to trees. So um, it'll be kind of, it'll be fun to have him come into the commission and, and put together a presentation and go into a little more depth on what our urban forestry is doing and some of the challenges. And him and I are starting to put together the kind of the backbone of a forestry management plan. And we can hopefully by that time we can share some of those topics with you and um, get some feedback on that. So that's with that, I will stay on for questions if you have any. Thank you, Mike. Do we have any questions for Mike from the commission? Hearing none. Uh, Garrett. And Kim, would you like to go ahead and move forward sure. with your reports, please? Sure, I can go ahead and take a stab at it. Um, Mr. President and commissioners, um, the rec department's actually been pretty busy, believe it or not, with all the governor orders and the stay, uh, stage one reopening of uh, youth activities and things. Primarily, I have been kind of overwhelmed with field reservations, external event cancellations, postponements, reschedules, all the above. Um, I was counting how many event days have actually already been canceled this year since all this coronavirus started. We're, we've already canceled 37 events um, this year. When I say events, you know, farmers market's been canceled. They wanted to start in April. They had to cancel the first couple of weeks of theirs um movie night those types of things so each of all those added up as 37 event days that have been canceled um steve already hit a lot on the recreation side when it comes to the sports and events uh shelly hit on some of the stuff with movie night fourth of july and gene Clanner day postponements or reschedules um home court um, jake has been overseeing that and he's been overseeing the um the floor resurfacing project this year that just got finished up and done. His staff is currently doing a lot of the cleaning and miscellaneous items that need to be done over there, basically building maintenance um, until we can open up. Um, the plan right now for home court is to start slowly opening June 1st. And uh, when I say slowly opening, we're going to start doing community ed classes in Bay 5 and slowly opening other parts of the facility with groups of 50 or less. I'm trying to keep that number under it. Um, but at the same time, we have that curtain project. We're replacing all those uh, curtains that divide the courts. And that project's supposed to start in June as well. And that's a three to four week project. So um, with all that, there's some protocols that have been set in place um, regarding the reopening of actually a home court as well. Um, camps and programs, uh, like I said just now, we're, we're starting to start see our community ed classes start in June 1st. Um, that's kind of our target. As long as we keep getting the positive feedback regarding the coronavirus and, and our stages, and we move into stage three, we're still for, uh, preparing to open those June 1st. Um, so right now, our programs start June 1st. Our summer camps are looking at starting June 8th with staff training starting June 1st. Um, we're going to have two sites at Discovery and Siena. And like Steve mentioned before, uh, literally within the first day, we're almost full at Discovery. And I just looked at the numbers here while I'm sitting at my desk. Um, Discovery can only take one or two more kids throughout the whole year already, throughout the whole summer. Um, Siena is, you know, about 25 to 30% full, depending on the week. And it's still pretty early, obviously, we get into the month, but um, Discovery is almost full, which is, is, is neat. Um, 
one thing I got, you've already mentioned, uh, or you heard from uh, Audrey as well. It's interesting because I went back and looked. I know Steve gave Audrey some props as well and gave her some shout outs, but she's only been with us since January 1st. So she's only been here for about four and a half months. And she literally has hit the ground running. And, and right from day one, she did her homework and has really fit in well. We, we feel that we've hit a grand sign with hiring her and the job she's done so far and and kind of take it and literally has owned everything she's done. So um, really good shout out to her. And then one more thing regarding the rec team in itself, with all this stuff going on, uh, Jenna with the, the camps and classes and programs and unknowns and Maggie having to cancel postpone seasons and leagues and things, we have had a huge um, team effort when it comes to that. I mean, Renee um, obviously does special events. Well, she jumped in and started helping Jenna with protocols for youth camps and how to open things. Shelly has done that and also helped cover the front desk while, while some are out and missing it here and there. Um, literally everybody has done something. Jake over home court has had time to help out with camp protocols. Um, Vicki and Rachel stepped up and helped me with dashboards when I've been overwhelmed with field stuff. Um, literally just in the last 30, 35 minutes, I've actually had three phone calls from youth sports teams wanting fields right now um, for practices tonight. Um, so it, it's it's interesting on how the whole team, and it really feels good to see the whole team come together and, and really help out really wherever is needed. So big shout out to the whole team there on the rec side. But um, otherwise, that is the rec update. Thank you so much, Garrett. Appreciate it. Kim? Thank you, Mr. President, commissioners. Um, I can attest to the rapid fire kind of adaptation that's going on in the back, the rec room, as I call it. Um, yeah, there has been a lot of teamwork and just a lot of not knowing. And then when we finally got word, boy, they sprung into action. So it is impressive. Um, <clears throat> I plan review is part of my job and I still, we still have some applications coming in just sort of as a point of interest. Nowhere near as many as we had before the COVID situation, but you know, a couple of pre-app meetings a week, three to four maybe. Um, it's about, it's a lot less, but but kind of interesting to know that things are still trying to move forward. Um, I've spent a lot of time the last few weeks um, taking another look at the pathway system. As Steve said, to find those projects that make the key connections that um, wouldn't otherwise be built, um, you know, and that may be on the small side, but really make a huge impact in terms of connectivity for the whole system. Um, part of that, I think, has just been, you know, we're taking another look and we've been talking to the mayor to kind of help him get familiar with the system, you know, areas he doesn't know. Um, and I think we've arrived at the conclusion that connectivity is, is going to be our strength as much as, um, you know, any, well, anyway, that's what, that's what we're aiming for. Um, so, Steve, I feel like in your extensive reporting, you took quite a bit of my thunder. So I won't, I won't over, I won't over repeat. Um, I'll say that Fairview Avenue, which um, Steve took a bike ride with the mayor. And I guess when they got um, from the Five Mile Creek at H2 up to Fairview Avenue, the mayor was like, well, where did the pathway go? And um, he made a good point. So I would, you know, it's nice to be able to say that that is underway. We have submitted a plan set to ACHD for approval and gotten comments back. Um, and then I'm pushing the consultant to resubmit that. Um, they're telling me this Friday, it may be early next week, but um, we want to get that approved so that we can relocate power poles and um, get some of the grant money spent before the end of the year. So that's moving along. South Slough, Finch Lateral, um, we are going to take a walk, Mike and I, with a consultant and the engineer just to, to look at the site. We'll need to get a legal description. Um, I guess as soon as we're approved for funding, we need to get that permission. And then we need to um, talk to Nam Meridian further about um, maybe bidding some pipe for the lateral so they can, they can install it for us. We've I touched on the possibility of that partnership and gotten some positive feedback, but we need to pin that down. Pine Avenue rest stop, which is east of Main Street, um, maybe about halfway to Locust Grove, where the pathway heads, H2 pathway takes off. 
um, the concrete work for that is in place and landscape work is beginning. So if you get a chance, go by there and you know see it's it's pedestrian amenities. There was a a graphic of it up earlier, but um, that's taking shape. Um, we also had some survey done on our local rail with trail project. That was the one outside of the rail corridor west of City Hall from Linder to Meridian Road. And there were a couple of easements we were looking into getting. So we had, um, we had the proposed alignment surveyed. It's pretty tight. Um, these properties were between second and third. Um, and I think both owners are really interested in granting access, but there may not be room for one. Uh, we did ask the mayor when we met with him yesterday, do you want us to keep going ahead with this uh, rail with trail project? And so we have invested a fair amount and I think if we wait a bit longer, we've got um, the potential to, to move it forward. So we're gonna keep pursuing that. Um, 10 mile road, five mile pathway trail hub. Um, that's kind of been in a holding pattern. Um, we will get, um, I'm gonna to talk to the consultant just finalize construction documents for that. Um, we're ready to, to get poised to bid um, later this year um, so that we can construct in the spring. So that one's been resting a bit, um, but is due to start up or to, to finish from a design and construction document point of view. And otherwise, um, I'll answer any questions you have if they're additional or if not, thanks for your time. Thank you so much, Kim. Uh, do, <clears throat> excuse me, are there any questions from the commission for Kim at this moment? Uh, Mr. President. Yes, Commissioner Bobo. I don't have a question, but Kim, I, I noticed as I'm on the trails a lot or pathways a lot these last few months, they are really appreciated by the public. Uh, you can, I'm, I don't know if you others have been on them a lot, but the amount of traffic, foot traffic and bicycle traffic on the pathways has been really nice to see. And people are just really appreciating having an off-road place to be able to go, a safe place to take their children and just walk their dogs. It's been, it's been really nice to see how popular they've become. Mr. Bobo, would you say that um, since the, the lockdown and were people staying at home, have they been more heavily used? Yes, definitely. Yeah, I've noticed that. I live in Boise, but I've noticed just the foot traffic is from a, a pedestrian oriented perspective. It's really kind of awesome. People have either taken back the streets or they're out on the pathways. And um, yeah, so I'm glad I haven't experienced that as much, not having been in Meridian. Um, but yeah, I'm really glad to hear that um, they functioned well as an amenity. Thank you, Commissioner Bobo. Uh, any further questions or comments for Kim? Uh, hearing none. Thank you so much, Kim Garrett, for your guys' uh, report and updates with regards to uh, recreation and pathways. Our next item, unless we have any further business, comments, questions, or concerns, is adjournment of tonight's meeting. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting? Mr. President. Uh, Commissioner Steele. Hey, I beat Joe, it looks like. Um, <laughs> I'd like to make a motion we adjourn tonight's meeting. Motion has been made. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Bye. Any opposed? Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a good Great night. Thanks, everyone.